In July of 2021, Peg and I, along with our good friends Alan and Leslie, embarked on a Viking cruise around Iceland, beginning in Reykjavik and circumnavigating the island in a clockwise direction. Iceland is well north of Europe and the continental USA, and is at the edge of the Arctic Circle. It is only 200 miles from Greenland, but has a milder climate due to being in the path of the Gulf Stream. Our flight departed from New York on a hazy afternoon, and five hours later we could see Iceland through the broken clouds. The ground was treeless, but was covered with patches of grasses and wild flowers on rocky barren ground. I had never seen topography that looked quite like this. It felt like we were arriving on another planet. When we got inside the terminal, we were greeted by the official bird of Iceland, a giant puffin, who had broken through the ceiling to provide a friendly welcome. As we exited the airport, the first thing we encountered were three works of art. The first, called Directions, consisted of four aluminum figures facing cardinal directions. The second, named the Jet Nest, shows a giant metal egg with a newborn jet and the third in the background is a 24 meter high aluminum and glass figure called Rainbow. During our one hour drive into Reykjavik, we saw lava fields varying in age from 500 to 3,000 years. We're told that the age can be determined by the degree that the lava rock is broken down and the extent to which moss and plants are growing on the newly formed soil. We also passed an aluminum smelting plant and learned that processing of bauxite ore has grown due to the abundance of low-cost hydroelectric power. Aluminum production is 3% of the GDP of Iceland and consumes five times as much power as the entire population. That afternoon, we took a walk around the city. Reykjavik has a population of 230,000 which is two-thirds of the entire country. There were lots of electric metal scooters and many tourists enjoying the warm weather. Everything was clean and there weren't a lot of cars. The Icelandic language is an ancient form of Norwegian that is no longer used in Norway. I found it to be extremely difficult. The Skolevortestinger road, which leads directly to the iconic Pilgrim's Church at the top of the hill has been painted with rainbow stripes, which we are told was part of an LGBT celebration. We passed the statue of Ingelford Andersen, who in 874 was the first permanent resident of Reykjavik. He named the area Reykjavik, which means smoke cove, due to the billowing steam rising from hot springs. These springs now heat 90% of the homes in the city. Our final stop was to admire the Concert Hall of Arpa, which was built in 2011. This structure consists of a steel framework clad with geometric colored panels inspired by the basalt landscape of Iceland. Our ship, the Viking Sky, arrived in port the next morning. All of the Viking seagoing ships have a similar design and size. Each holds 920 passengers and is easy to get around. If you haven't been on one, here are a few photos of what to expect. From the port side of the ship, we saw a grass-covered shoreline with just a few houses. Panning to the mainland, we see the population density increases slightly. And even this close to the city, there's still a lot of open space. This structure is a geothermally heated soccer field. Geothermal heat allows Icelanders to play indoor sports in comfort year-round. The next day was filled with photo opportunities. 
beginning with a trip to the village of Thurlaxhofen, where we saw a black lava beach spotted with wild flowers that display a simple beauty of the struggle for survival in the poor soil, cool climate, and short growing season. Near the beach, we observed rows of racks containing dried cod fish heads. We're told that fish heads are exported to Nigeria, where they are a popular food item. The next stop was the Hengal Volcano, which does not look like a volcano at all. It is 38 square miles of hot springs with fumaroles which eject hot sulfuric gases in a landscape so desolate that it seems like another planet. It is an active volcano, but it has not erupted for 2,000 years. The reason it and most other volcanoes in Iceland are flat rather than being shaped like a conical mountain is that rather than ejecting a core of hot lava, it ejects hot water and gases from a crack in the European and North American tectonic plates. This map shows how the intersection of the continental plates divides Iceland. The river of heated soil is the actual fracture line between the continents. The continental plates are moving apart at a rate of one inch per year. Thus, the volcano is actually a crack in the earth, and it provides geothermally heated water that is used all over the island to heat homes and buildings. Continuing our inspection of the site, we saw older lava fields that were covered with moss and even a few plants. There are also some amazing stone formations. We next traveled to the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Thingvillir National Park, where Iceland's first parliament was held in 930 AD. From the lookout platform on a cliff, we could see a broad plain with streams and a large lake in the distance. We followed the path to the base of the cliff, noting intriguing volcanic rock formations. At the base of the cliff is a path out to the plain where a flag marks the spot where the annual two-week meetings are held to adjudicate laws and settle disputes. The last parliament was held here in 1798. The traces of temporary dwellings or booths can still be seen. A depiction of this was painted by W.C. Collingwood in 1897. Here the parliamentary meeting site is a stream known as the Drowning Pool. Here, between 1618 and 1749, 18 women were drowned as accepted punishment for crimes such as infidelity. They were tied up in a sack and pushed into the pool and held under the water. We continued on to Gullfoss to marvel at the Golden Falls. This is the nation's most famous waterfall. It plunges into Havita Canyon, and those who don't mind getting wet can approach quite closely. These falls remind me of Niagara Falls in the U.S., with the great volume of water running over the full width of the cliff and into a steep walled canyon. Being transported to our next stop, we were struck by the stark natural beauty of the land. It includes vast areas of sparsely inhabited pastures and mountains. Icelandic horses and farm animals have grazed on this land for over a thousand years. Final stop of the day is the Stoker Geyser at the Haukadalur Geothermal Area. This is another area where steam continually rises from water heated beneath the surface. The geyser here small with a brief eruption, but in this portrait it is shown as being much larger than the past. 